Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear uh, me? Now I have sound. Okay. All right. Go. Are you home, Liam, or are you still in Philly? No, I'm home now. We went on uh, uh, New Year's from Philly up to Vermont and then came here. Whoops. Now what did I do? I don't know. I still, I can still see and hear you. Oh, rats. Um, I have to call in my tech expert. <laughs> Where am I, Polly? I, my finger just brushed yeah, against that. Oh, there I am. Thanks. I'm going to send a text to Arlene and maybe call Noreen, although she's often just a minute late. Yep. And Garrett said he might not do it, right? Right. He's not. Uh, he's not joining us tonight. I should have sent out the, oh, Arlene's here. Cool. Yeah. Here is a Mary Jo Johnson. Okay. So we now have, we now have a quorum and we're already recording. Okay, I've sent a text to Nori and maybe she'll join us, but we we can start. Um, so we are recording. This is the Board of Health meeting of January 4th, 2023. Um, and three of us are here. Hi, Wim. Hi, Arlene. Hello. Um, Hi. And we have some some people visiting are you guys here maria and mary Jo? are you here for a particular purpose for one of our agenda items well i'm i'm following the deeper story okay and maria what about you hi there uh, i am here because i didn't see it on your agenda but i was um uh, just popping in to see if you guys are going to talk about artificial turf at any point no we're not okay I'll listen to the beavers stuff though. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I guess we might as well start there. So so last week, my goodness, what an what a mess that was. Um, we had decided to cancel the meeting, right? And about five minutes before, oh here's Noreen. I'll give her a minute. Hi, Noreen. You're muted, Noreen. She's not quite connected. Yeah. So I'll wait for her to, to announce herself and uh, ask you guys about your travels. Were they good? I remember Ar Arlene, you got rerouted to Albuquerque. Yes, I'm still in Denver. Um, oh, you're still there. Yeah. yeah. What were you flying southwest? I was. Oh. And, um, no. <laughs> and got, it was. It's a, a a long story for another time, but yeah, it was nasty. And I did not reconnect with my luggage for six days. 
the Denver airport was just bonkers. Oh, well. on, on the Thursday, my sister's family were meant to fly to, I guess they were meant to fly to San Diego and from there on to someplace in Mexico. And they their flight was canceled mm-hmm. from Denver. They were flying from Denver. Mm-hmm. Their flight was canceled and they drove from Denver to San Diego in a single day. Oh. 1,800 miles. Whoa. Here's Noreen. We can... Uh, here I am. Get back to this. So we're talking a little bit about the, the whole beaver dam thing. After we decided to cancel our me- meeting about five minutes before I went to post that, I got a call from Tim um, uh, asking us to, to consider the a request to break down the beaver dam. Unfortunately, the call was on my cell phone and I was at town hall and my cell phone was at home. Yeah. So, so I've made a resolution to never, never, ever cancel a scheduled meeting, even if we just <laughs> open it and close it, because okay. I always regret it. You know? yeah. So, so Tim had asked for um, a permit from us or permission from us to um, to remove the de- beaver dam that was blocking the culvert under um, under Lakeview Road, and. Um, um, it was there was a, a sharp um, uh, disparity between the water on one side and the water on the other side. I think Howard said it was like a foot. Uh, Howard's the dam keeper, and he was concerned about it. So, um, so that's why we had scheduled the extra extra meeting. But um, I went down to look at the the dam a day or two before the the meeting was scheduled, and I saw that water was was flowing. And I thought that maybe the storm had carried the dam away, but unfortunately it's not so. But the water was high enough that it was flowing right over the top of the dam. And um, when I told him about it, he said that um, he doesn't want to take it down at this time, that um, probably he'll, he'll do it in the spring. But, you know, it seems to me that we ought to have, um, we ought to have a, like a standing order that the <laughs> that that the the culvert has to be kept open, right, for water circulation. We can't yes. have beavers um, just just closing it up. Garrett has the idea that there should be. Um, actually, I'm not exactly sure how he imagines this happening but he thinks that we should go to town meeting or somebody should go to town meeting and and ask for an appropriation to study and deal with um, particularly difficult to manage beaver habitat in town and then that would be that would be the main one really the only as far as i know the only trapping permits that we've been asked for, and this is the first time we've been asked for a destruction permit, have been um, at this Lakeview Road culvert and from the Amherst uh, Water Department down by Atkins Reservoir. So it wouldn't be a big thing. So I told Garrett that I would talk with Becky about it and ask how she, how she might suggest that we go about doing this. Any thoughts from the board? No? Yeah, okay. Nori, always a thought. Um, you know, I suppose we need to go through this study since we've had some comments made at previous meetings, but it seems to me this has been a chronic problem. Um, yeah. It has been cleaned out on a regular basis for years. And I, I like the idea of some sort of standing order personally. Mm-hmm. to yeah. allow it to happen yeah we've so. never had that or needed it before but um but now um it seems to be getting more contentious but it's also a completely different issue than trapping and killing beavers right. in fact it's like providing employment for beavers right? <laughs> an employment program yeah. Yeah. Right. i like your thinking wim yeah, really. I mean, this is well, what we do for a living. So. Right, right. This is only going to get worse. 
Yes. Uh, as a problem for us because that that beaver habitat is really filling in. You know, they um, they they spread out and the Fisk Brook. I don't know how many of you have walked up to, to the top of it. Definitely. It um, there are beavers in Fisk Brook. There's a, I think there's two lodges and um, it's it's the perfect setup for a, a water flow control device, which they've had there working really well for years. Um, because there's a very high drop, it's probably it's probably six or eight feet from the from the pond into the where the where the stream starts. But beavers are now starting to fill in with construction up at the top of Fisk Fisk Brook as well, as well as all along the middle. So they are rapidly outgrowing their habitat. So that can only mean we're going to have more conflicts with them. I, I totally agree with that, Kat. I walk it regularly. And the, the second part is I understand as part of the bequeath of the Fisk Pond land to the town of Wendell, they can't do anything about the beaver population on that, that side, or they haven't been able to find a way to... Um, you know, the I, I believe the terms of that bequeathment said that the, um, you know, the beavers and anybody on that property, any animals were to be left undisturbed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't know how much of the water um, that I, Pine Brook Camp owns. Yeah, I don't either. Down by our, our end of things. I don't know. Um, yeah, it would, be, it would be great if we could leave them undisturbed, but they would have to leave us undisturbed and they don't seem willing to do that. <laughs> right. right. So, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but we, we just need to have an order that the, the, the culvert has to be kept open. You know? Can we do a standing order? And, can we do both? Can we do a standing order and also talk to Becky about the possibility of having a study done? Yeah, I think we can. If, if somebody can come up with some kind of reasonable way to keep that open without having to do trapping or having to do trapping only rarely, that would be that would be better. Yeah. I don't know how that would be. but Yeah, we can't but, be the first community to be facing right. this problem and trying to come up with non-lethal solutions. I'm, I'm sure we're not. It's just that that's it's a really tricky a really tricky spot but um but yeah garrett's idea is we will put out a request for for proposals mm -hmm. and hire somebody then to to implement one mm -hmm. if if we got any yeah yeah i think i think that both would be good because because whatever whatever proposal we get and can implement it's it's probably always going to be necessary to manually clean out that culvert, mm -hmm. right? I think they're always gonna, gonna build there. By the way, they've been taking down some of the trees by, by at Elliott Park, you know, that are like beyond the gazebo. I, I wanted those trees taken down in the first place, so I'm cheering them on. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I don't know. I can't imagine that the CONCOM is happy about that. I mean, it's more, you know, uh, foliage and trees holding in the, the embankments around those uh, areas that are close to the water. I know I'm not happy about it over on our side of the lake when they take down, you know, the shrubs and, and bushes right on the lake. It, it really contributes a lot to the erosion problem. Well, I don't think it's too bad over by by um, Elliott Park because it's pretty flat there. It's very yeah. low lying ground. Mary Jo, did you want to say something? Oh, um, so I've I've been doing quite a bit of reading on on the topic of beavers and water level control devices and so on over the fall. Um, and I, although I haven't been to one of your meetings, just due to scheduling and oversight and things. Um, I have been to a CONCOM meeting and I've also been to um, an ECAC meeting where um, they discussed beaver. Um, 
And because beaver are so good at purifying water, cooling water, um, controlling water in the event of storm, in the event of storms, um, and increasing um, the ability of the ground to hold water, creating wetlands, um, they are and could be classified as a natural solution climate change. And ECAC um, has potentially access to MPP grants from the state for doing things that are natural solutions to climate change. So yes. particularly if you connect um, beaver with you know, um, restoring habitat and protecting from stormwater damage, um, and being a natural solution, which it's very interesting, beaver populations actually are self-regulating. So um, at, at a certain point, because they're territorial, they'll, they'll reach their population comfort level and just move on, or they won't have young as frequently, um, which is kind of amazing actually. Um, but in any case, um, there's a possibility that there could be state money to bring people out to do this here uh, at Lake Wyola and possibly, um, you know, wherever they're having to clear out um, near the Atkins Reservoir, um, any other places as well. So um, I, it's something that I have kind of encouraged them to potentially look into. Um, and to me, that would be a nice possibility because it, it provides a great opportunity to talk about what natural solutions to climate change are, um, to connect with the environment, and also to potentially do a good thing in terms of stormwater um, issues and control and climate change. Well, it could be it could be great if there were some was some state money to help with this because um, if there if there is a good solution out there and. Um, we're, I mean, the Board of Health is all in favor of beavers as long as we can keep keep the streams running, right? right. It's crucial, crucial to keep that stream flow, you know, full, right, and going and going through there. If you have, so, if you have an interest on um, understanding about the hydrology and all of that, um, there is a publication from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife that tells everything and anything that you would want to know about what beavers do to the way that water flows, um, how they keep water on the landscape, um, what kind of environment that they create, which actually, if you look at the area between Fisk Pond and Lake Wyola, um, beaver made that. Do you know what I mean? Oh, beaver yeah, made absolutely. Made and, and nobody is bothering exactly them as long as they stay, as long yeah. as they stay up there. What we can't have them doing is obstructing the culvert. And that's, that's the only thing we object to. Yeah, well, and I think for, based on, because I've, I've read the guidebook fairly closely, um, there would be ways to encourage them to actually um, build in a different spot and then potentially not need to block the culvert at all. Um, they've been working, you know, there are a lot of people that are working to outsmart beavers all over the country. And um, they've come up with some pretty ingenious ideas. Well, we, if we can, uh, if we can get ourselves um, organized and um, uh, arrange for someone to come in and consult, uh, we'll keep all those things in mind. Okay, Hi. I think we're probably, I think we're probably done with this topic. So we move on. Okay. Um, so as far as green burial goes, I don't really have anything to, to tell you. Um, we haven't heard back from JCA, so I assume that means that they have not completed their, their survey or had the survey completed. I was working a little bit on doing a regulation or you know trying to start drafting a regulation, but I got, um, I got distracted by some other tasks. One thing I did hear sort of um, uh, indirectly was that someone complained to Rita Farrell that the Board of Health was preventing 
green burials from happening in, in the Jewish cemetery, which I suspect, which we didn't, um, I suspect that means that they are putting a hold on it until they get some more information. However, nobody who, has who's told us. JCA. Oh. So if they have a death within their community and this is their only cemetery, what do we? They'll suppose, use conventional, what, conventional what, burial. But right, I, they're putting a hold on I, green burial. Right, but I thought that Sam had said at one point, not too many meetings ago, last time he attended, I guess, that green burials were the only um, burials that they were doing. Well, that's their intention, but, but uh, we interrupted that. So it sounds okay. like, I mean, this is kind of conjectural, but it mm -hmm. sounds like they've said either they're not going to do any for until they get mm -hmm. uh, more information, or they're not um, not maybe they're just not going to sell any more plot. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Okay, but we're still Thank waiting, you. still waiting to hear back from from Thanks, them. Mm -hmm. um, I got distracted from from the rag because I was doing some year-end data entry, because we've got this monster database with all our documents organized in it. And apparently I maxed it out because it stopped saving, saving the, um, the records. So I'm trying to, the, the database is sort of built in access and it has this big elaborate shell around it. And I'm trying to just take the the records and put them into a different access file. And I'm learning access on the fly. And it was going really well until today when I got to what my husband used to call a bad place in the sugar. So um, I don't know what's happening with that, but I will kind of get back to drafting a regulation for you guys to, to uh, consider pretty soon. Chris had a hand up for a second there, but then <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Um, okay. Hi. Thanks. Um, I just I would want to comment. I do. A friend of a coworker has bought a green burial plot within the last year. I believe just a few months ago. Uh -huh. um, well, we're talking about you know like in the past month or so. I I, I so don't. I don't. I don't, know. don't know. I guess there's just there has been a question in the back of our heads about like what's the timeline for, uh, you know, finishing the right, I understand there's a lot going on and it's going to take some time, but um, if we have a sense of the time frame, and also we were wondering at what point would it be appropriate to ask for a moratorium placed on green burials while we're figuring this out. I have no idea whether the JCA has volunteered to put a hold to either selling or uh, doing green burial. I know it has continued within the last year. Um, there haven't been any in the last few uh, weeks or the last month, but I believe the last count was up to seven. Um, they were in the in, in the farther end. So they have been doing, since this issue came up, they have put in more burials. I believe the last one was within about a month and a half ago. Um, so. Okay, well, that's an interesting, an interesting thought. I would, we don't, have a specific timeline, but we would like to have it done probably within a month or two to have the reg yeah. sorted out. Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. Oh, we just want to get a sense of the timeline because there is concern that they'll continue putting in and all the bodies going in are within the 300 feet. Um, they are at the farther end, but they are within the 300 feet of the DEP guidelines or suggestions, so. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, can we move on? Any more to be said about this? Noreen, do you have anything to tell us about the Public Health Excellence Grant? I, how, yes. how, do we, how do we want to talk about that? I mean, how do we want to name that? Do we call it Public Health Excellence Grant or do we call it something else? I call it the Public Health Excellence Grant. Okay. I guess we can call it the 
the P Valley Health Coalition grant. Oh. That's the other okay. thing that we've named ourselves. Either one. They both work for me. Okay. Um, okay. So um, the, the first thing on the agenda is both Jen Hoffman and Athea Lee Bailey. Jen Hoffman is the uh, director of public health for Greenfield. They're the ones who submitted the grant. And Althea is the uh, administrative person who is helping us uh, with the grant, would like to meet with all of the boards on the six towns that are participating, um, oh, just to, to get to know each other and to talk about, uh, you know, what's, what's going on, what some of the requirements are, and that sort of thing. So I was hoping maybe tonight we could get a time frame for one of our next meetings, Kat, to invite them to, to come and join us. Okay. Oh, I see. They wanted to, to meet with each board individually. Is that? Yeah, I think they wanted to meet in person, but we don't, you know, we're meeting on, we're meeting Zoom. So I think, you know, we could invite them to come to one of our meetings either this month or early next month. They wanted to do it sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. I, I am going to be gone, I think, um, un, unable to attend our March meetings. Um, I'm going to be in Hawaii, oh. so. Um, I'm so sorry for you. Yeah, I know. So I, I think that's, uh, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but um, I'm gone from late February through March 22nd. Um, oh, the 23rd, I think is gonna be the second of the March meetings. Let me look at a calendar. Um, if that's the case, then I will, I'll be home by then. Um, you be seriously jet lagged. You I might, might not be, be up to a meeting. Uh, I might be worthless. It's true. Um, you might be home unless you're flying southwest again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I, excuse me. I am getting back on the 22nd, which is the night of our second March meeting. So you're going to miss both the meetings in March. Are you going to miss a meeting in February as well? No. I should okay. be around for fifty. Uh, are Are you bringing that up, Arlene? Also, because you might need some backup help from the public health uh, excellence grant person. Well, I might. I mean, I can I can do a lot of stuff remotely, you know. Um, right. But with the time difference and um, outings of ours when we are there, it might be. A little bit too much to expect that I am communicating with people. Okay, I I have a little bit of good news about that. Um, okay. It looks like, well, actually, I got notice from Jen Hoffman yesterday that she has a retired nurse who's inter was interested in the in the job. She'll know for certain within a day or two, and uh, she just wanted to run that person you know, by me and John in uh, Leverett. And mm -hmm. so we could get to meet her and talk yep. to her a little bit. We can't be part of the hiring process because that will take place via the uh, Human Resources Department in Greenfield and their rules and regulations. Uh, but that, that was looking good. I didn't hear from Jen today, but um, I, she was thinking that this person was interested in, in taking on the position, which would be great. Noreen, do you know whether this person is Maven trained? I don't know. I know this is a person that Jen worked with during when they were running their COVID clinics and she was helping out and she was um, very happy with the, you know, responsiveness and availability and willingness of this mm -hmm. person to, to do the job. So I do not know that, mm -hmm. but I know that Jen will, you know, get her up to speed as quickly as she can I'm sure, and mm -hmm. and her other public health nurse, of course, does use Maven. Okay, so I, I I'll, I'll run that. I'll, I'll ask that question. Mm -hmm. I'm just so, making a note. So would it be would it be appropriate to invite them, whoever you said was would come to our next our next yeah, regular meeting? I think that would be great, and I can go ahead and. Um, invite them to participate in our Zoom. And I think you already have their emails or I can send them to you again. Um, the, Kat, I'm the happy only, to do that. The only problem with our next meeting might be that Garrett may not be here. And True. if we want 
his presence, then we might want to do the first meeting in February. That um, might be good because I, I, yeah, I know that Garrett is is going to be away, and so it's not clear whether he'd be able to attend or not. So, so that first meeting in February would be when the first, the first okay. actually, February first. Why, why yes. don't we why don't we invite them for that? Okay, and I'll go ahead and take care of that, Kat. Okay, thank you. Um, and who is it that wants to come? I'm sorry. It, it's Jen Hoffman, who mm -hmm. I think you know Jen. Jen's the director yeah. of public health. And uh, uh, Jen Althea. And, Althea. And her, by the way, uh, Noreen, her name's Athena. I know, you're right. Athena Lee Bailey. Mm -hmm. um, so the second part is that we talked about, and I think... Uh, I forwarded to you this afternoon. I don't know if you got a chance to look at it. Jen also sent me some information on a software package that she is considering for conducting, um, doing reports for permits and inspections. And there's some, uh, the state is looking to have the six towns that are working together in the public health coalition using similar kinds of formats and using similar kinds of software systems to, for reporting uh, findings from permits and inspections. So um, the question was, do we have anyone, does anyone want to take a look at the software that she's contemplating purchasing for Greenfield, which she seems to think is pretty easy to use, works pretty smoothly, that type of thing, since down the road, we're going to have to be thinking about using a similar sort of forms, uh, I guess is what it used to be in the past, paper forms, um, to enter our data uh, similarly. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really clear on exactly what kinds of forms and data and reports we're talking about? Uh, all, all I've understood is there are the forms and the kind of information that would normally go into making an inspection report or uh, I guess a report, uh, uh, issuing a permit for a septic or a well, for example. Well, now, the inspection reports all come from Charlie and Claudia, so I, I'm not, I don't know anything about that. The, the, um, the other forms, for example, for anything to do with the septic system, those come straight from DEP. We don't make up our own. Um, so those, and those are out there and they're available electronically. Um, uh, the other kinds of permits, that we do are well permits, and those are issued from our own well regs. So we have, and we may be the only town in the in the group to have well regs, and so we have our own our own form for that. And I suppose we could use a different one. On the other hand, if they don't, if nobody else is using it, there's nobody else for us to sync up with. Does Charlie well, serve these other towns, the five others as well? No. Is he the, no, he's, no. No, no Charlie know. serves Shootsbury, um, Northfield, and Irving. So in, in all likelihood, there are probably six different agents that serve the six different towns, which is probably one of the reasons why they want to have some a uh, common reporting system in place. Um, and it seems to me, Kat, if we have, if we're the only one that has a form or does well regs, then maybe we, you know, maybe we enter the kind of data into the system that we're already capturing, for example. Right, is this something that we can talk about when they come to see us? Yeah, I think that, yeah, I was just gonna suggest that. And I, it, you know, I think it's just something that's coming up in some of the uh, state meetings that they are attending. So I'm not sure how much they know about it at this point too. And the, the memo that Jen sent me would, today was just to see if anyone in our group of six towns was interested in even taking a look at the software and, and how it works. 
does it make any sense to invite uh, Charlie or Claudia to attend yeah, the same meeting? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, what else came up? Um, the minimal performance standards, I think we all got copies of those the beginning of Oh yeah, and they asked December. for comments. Yeah, uh, and basically the minimum performance standards just reflect, my understanding is the existing, the existing codes. So there's nothing above and beyond what is already in code that has gone into those standards. I, I, and I don't know. I mean, I don't work with that kind of stuff, so I can't really. Well, I looked in the in the survey, and it was basically, do you have any comments on on this part? Do you have any comments on that part? But the parts weren't included in it, and I wasn't about to spend time on that. Right. Uh, and then the other question was, is there anything that Charlie or Claudia use for supplies or equipment that could go into a, the budget for the six towns that they need in particular, or that could augment, um, you know, what they're already using or purchasing? Kat, do you know from working you know, with the, you'd the, have to ask them. the district or anything like that? Do they have a I, budget for that? They, they we they have quite a, a elaborate budget, and um, I remind you that as of I assume as of a couple of days ago, Claudia is now um, uh, considered an employee of Irving, right. and um, and we pay our our share of her time directly to Irving to be dispersed to her. And they do have, it's not just a simple salary setup. They do have a regular budget with uh, line items for equipment and, and uh, all kinds of office needs, transportation. Okay. So I guess the question was if there's anything above and beyond that we might need that could be included in this new budget as we're getting you know, we have money to buy computers, equipment, software, that kind of thing in this new budget. And I, I, think, I don't really know either. Yeah, I think that they probably they're handling that and it would be so complicated because we are, you know, we do work with Charlie and Claudia in the district, which is soon to be basically superseded. Um, but only one part of the district is part of this public health group. So it's, it yeah, could be right. kind of, it kind of could be really complicated, I think. Right. To try to get okay. anything that would be used by the district. Um, on the other hand, if they were buying things for the individual participating towns, um, that might be different. Although I think we probably have, at the moment, we, I think we have everything we need. Okay. Um, you know what? I think we still have that damn vaccine uh, carrier. I think yeah, we got, sure. I think we have two. We got, we got we two. two. That's the thing. Yeah. We got two. So we have a spare one if anybody wants it. Right. Oh, and speaking of spare ones, we'll finish what you were going to say, and then I'll, I have something. No, else. that that's that was my the last item that I had. Okay. So so a couple of days ago, I went to the shed with Ken Rotundi because he was going on his annual hunting trip and he asked if he could borrow a couple of the older radios to take on the on the trip. And so I let him have a couple. And I noticed when we opened it up that we have an awful lot of those radios, you know, and that our, our plans for them kind of didn't really pan out. And I've been wondering what we should do with them. I mean, some of them are still in their original box. I don't know. I thought we never, I didn't think Ken ever got those radios working. I guess he must have gotten a set of well, them working. Well, I hope he did. He took two yeah. radios and, a, and a, um, a, a charger. And I guess I'll hear about it when he comes, when he comes back, if he got them working or not. I hope he did. Yeah, Remember, we used, them, we used them at that first outdoor town meeting. 
back in right. And I, oh, the other please. thing, as I recall, we yeah. got them because we didn't necessarily have communication. Let's say those of us down at the lake with people who lived in town or the other side of town and that sort of thing in case there yeah. was an emergency. Yeah, we were thinking that they would be they would be kind of divided up among the different neighborhoods and stuff. But that whole neighborhood thing kind of kind of fell apart. Right. Me. So so we ought to think about what to do with them. Maybe keep some at town hall for kind of, you know, possibly if if people are going on a site visit or something and they want to have a couple of radios with them, you know, they could borrow them. But maybe we could sell them or give them away or do something with them because, you know, what's the point? Right. So if you have any great ideas, let me know. So the only thing left on the agenda that I can think of is um, is the the demolition project. And so I got a I got a report from from Greg, and uh, he is expecting to have the house demolished by spring. He uh, he is still, as he put it, pleading with National Grid to be reconnected because they mistakenly disconnected him. Um, he's been removing interior items in preparation for demolition. Um, he is getting indications that the insurance company and the demolition company are agree coming to an agreement on the cost. So it's been a, that's been a major issue. I asked him specifically about why not just use the generator. And he said, because although the generator could run, it's, it's, it, it's, it's about being able to provide water. And I'm not exactly sure why that is required during the, the demolition, but apparently it is. He said it can run the pump intermittently, but um, it would most likely overheat the, the deep well pump with the constant starting and stopping at the flow that he is expecting. And so that's not a that's not an ideal ideal situation. So things seem to be moving on. I don't I don't know if you realize that that fairly soon into this into this project, um, um, Greg had a bad uh, head and neck injury and he's had serious health effects from this that are ongoing and so he's really it's an up it's an uphill battle for him so i'm trying to be i'm trying to be patient but i i recognize that it has been going on and on and on and on, on so he's hoping for spring and uh, me too so so can we agree that we will review this again in a month's time yes by the, uh, by the way by the way um garrett has the idea and i don't know if it's correct or not i'm going to check it with grace and find out but garrett has the idea that um that we can participate in these meetings from anywhere we want to but we can only actually vote if we're physically in the state Oh, and hmm. I and I have no idea if that's if that's true or not. Uh, it seems it seems idiotic, frankly, if it is true, because you know, I mean, how would you know? For one thing, you know, right? We could all be in different states, and we wouldn't know it. Hmm. Do Do you have any idea how he came up with that notion? Or I don't know. He just sent me an email saying something about it. I can't remember his exact his exact words of, about it but it seems surprising and I, I it might be something that actually has to do with some other thing like you know the legislature let me see if i can find it I, i'm just reminded a few years ago one of our um select board members you know went to florida for a few months in the winter and seemed to conduct business or you know, work on the select board remotely. Uh -huh. uh huh. Right. Well, yeah. I'm. I'm hoping that it's not. It's not true that he's just. Um. He's just confused. Let me see if I can find it.
He said, I may be able to join the meeting, but I have a question. My understanding is that with remote meetings, we can only vote if we are participating while in state. So I don't know where he got this idea and whether it might be true or not. I'm in state and I move that we approve the minutes from our last meeting. Oh, Wim, you are wonderful. Thanks for remembering that. Do, do we carry a second? I, I can second it, I guess. There's no reason why I can't. All in favor? Yes. Well, yes. I don't know whether to vote or not. Well, you can vote. It <laughs> might not vote, count. Throw my vote out if you need to, but right, I would say right. yes. <laughs> right, okay. And uh, I have one more thing since uh, Arlene said she's going to be away. I, too, am going to be away in March. But I think you'll be back when I go, Arlene. So, OK. When, when do you go? Um, I leave the 4th of March. I leave the 4th of March. No, I'm, I'm gone, gone for from, three weeks. I'm gone from February 26th through March 22nd. Sorry. Oh, OK. So we will both be away for the 15th. Cat. Okay. And is it the first in the first meeting? That's the second. Second meeting. Second. But if Garrett's back, you would still have a quorum. Yeah. Yeah. And even if not, we only need three. Yeah, but we need Garrett, right? Because you go. You would need Garrett. Bottom. Right. Correct. Okay. okay. Well, was... remind me, okay, when the time comes, because I forget, I forget these things. Okay. And where are you going? I'm going to New Zealand. Why? Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That sounds great. H hiking. Three weeks of hiking. Nice. Yeah. Wonderful. And it'll be, it'll be what? Fall, fall, like early fall? Yeah, it'll be there? September. Mm -hmm. It'll be there September. So it, it, yeah, it'll be nice if I can do it. We'll, we'll see. I'll wow. report in. Okay. All right. Okay, are we, are we, uh, are we done? Anything else to be talked about? Let me just check my notes. I don't have anything else to talk about. Nor do I. Okay. No. Okay. Well, how about we adjourn and uh, we'll we'll meet again on the what the eighteenth, I guess. Right. And then I'm inviting um, Jen, Athena, and uh, Charlie and Claudia on the first. Correct? Right. Yeah. I'll okay. get that. I'll get that on the on my notes for the agenda. Okay. Very good. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Good night. Thank you.